Good night, sweetheart, I whispered as I carefully extracted myself from my four-year-old's daughter's bed. Another bedtime story over, and one more step towards adulthood. Why can't they stay little forever? I exit the bedroom like a ninja, careful not to let too much of the hall's light shine on her sleeping face. Then, quietly close the door so that the latch clicks home. Daddy, are you still there? I hold my breath. Then, let go an exasperated sigh. I thought I had finally gotten Sarah to sleep. Now, it was going to be at least another half hour of effort. It had already been a long day. Before I can answer, I hear another voice, a stranger's voice. Yes, darling, daddy loves you and will never leave you. Who the hell is in Sarah's room? I turn the knob, but the door won't budge. In fact, the knob starts to slide through my grasp in the opposite direction. Sarah! I shout at the shut door then slam it with the palm of my hand. Can I have another hug, daddy? Sure thing, sweetie, comes the reply in a near replica of my own voice. So close, but with something else in it that I can't pinpoint. Sarah, that's not daddy, I scream. She doesn't hear me. The door still won't budge, even when I throw my whole weight into it. Your beard tickles, daddy, Sarah giggles. Get away from my daughter, I shout, as I try to beat a hole through the wood. I try the knob again, but the metal has become molten hot and instantly sears my palm. Why is your mouth getting so big, daddy? I sense only the slightest bit of unease. It's so stretchy. Sarah, why can't you hear me? Where's the rest of my family? Don't you touch her! Get away from her! Daddy, you're scaring me! I hear her say with tears in her voice. Stop it! I now know what was in the stranger's voice. Pure evil. I suddenly remember there's a hatchet in the garage. My feet don't move as fast as they should, but somehow I make it there. The hatchet is hanging on a peg. I snatch it and return as fast as humanly possible to Sarah's bedroom door. It's no use. Even after our rage-fueled frenzy, the door remains unscathed and solid. No sound comes from the room now. As tears run down my cheeks, the door slips slightly open. It takes a second for it to register. My chest heaves. I pant. Then throw open the door, ready to chop down whatever is touching my Sarah on the other side. However, all that greets me is a blood-soaked pile of sheets and blankets beside an open window, curtains blowing in the cool night breeze. Somewhere far, a dog howls, crickets chirp, and my daughter is gone. I arrived at Pinhouse Farm at 3.43 a.m. After receiving an anonymous phone call detailing the whereabouts of the missing boy, uh, Dave, David, David Linfield? That's right, yeah. He had been missing over a year, presumed dead after a couple of hikers found his torn clothes by Fletcher's Park, Mountain Lion area. Well, you know the story. Yes. The caller claimed he had seen David up by the farm, so they sent me up here to look around. Just you? Well, yes. We didn't really think we'd find him, you know. So you arrived at the farm? Yes, the farm, as you know, has been abandoned for decades after the accident. The family. Nasty business, before my time. Anyway. I decided to do a thorough search of the house first. And? Nothing. Dust and bird shit. So you cleared it? 
Yes, it took me about half an hour or so. Gigantic waste of time. I was ready to roll back home, you know, when I heard the noises coming from the barn. How would you describe them? I don't know, almost like squealing, high-pitched, creepy as hell. I figured maybe a deer or something had got itself stuck or wounded, so I grabbed my rifle before heading in. And what did you find? You already know exactly what I found. For the record, Henry. Right. I found the boy. Didn't I? David, whatever his name is, Linfield. Where? In the barn, Jonah. Details, Henry. He was in a box. First thing I saw when I entered the barn. A tiny box. Maybe two by two feet. The sound, the squealing was intense. Horrifying. But I saw a glimpse of his eyes between the cracks. And I knew somehow that it was him. So you opened it. Yeah, yeah yes, I opened it. You're alright there, Henry? Yes, yes, I'm sorry, yes. What did you see? Ah, uh, well, it's hard to explain. It wasn't just that he was in a box, you know. He was the box. What do you mean? I think he put him there on the same day that he went missing. Broke his legs and arms and all, and stuffed him in that tiny box. So when he healed... Yes? Well, he became the shape of the box. A box body. And then... And then I puked my guts out there for a few before I raised my flashlight and lit up the rest of the barn. Why? There were more squealing. The other boxes. Uh, yes, dozen of them. Dozen of box people. You told the first responders you tried to remove David from the box. Yes, I'm sorry about that. What happened? I lifted him out of it, and then, he looked at me, with a distorted face and those big eyes, and, and he what? He smiled, he smiled, and then he said something, something I'll never forget. What did he say? Please put me back, he said, please put me back home.